match up. So that's pretty easy. That's going to be pretty chiral. All right. Now let's look into the hard ones, Fisher projections. Now, when it comes to identifying meso compounds, that's really easy because meso compounds is basically an achiral multi chiral centered molecule. Basically, that's how I think of it. And you just need one internal line of symmetry. And so what I mean by that is you can, for Fisher structure, you can have a horizontal or vertical line of symmetry. That's it. So right here, if we were to have a horizontal line of symmetry, do they match up? Yes, they do. You might be thinking, wait, well, I thought the, uh, the horizontal lines were dashed and then the vertical lines were um, pointed away, which you're right. Um, but in all honesty, what I have to say to that is don't overthink it. Like, why would you want to think about that when all you have to know is, okay, look, I'm looking at this structure. There's a line of symmetry. This matches with that. That matches with this. That's a line of symmetry. You don't have to think about it. Just, I'm trying to show you the tricks. This is a trick. All right. If you ask me to explain it, I'm going to be like, bruh. Okay. <laughs> it is literally just my trick that I use. Just, there's one line of symmetry. Boom. It's a chiral. The moment that's there, a chiral. I'm done with it. I don't want to look at it again until I get my test back. You can also make a vertical line of symmetry. It's vertical. It's equal in both halves. So it's a meso compound. And if you look even further, look at that chiral carbon. Bromine, bromine. You already have two groups that are the same. <laughs> that's that's a, that's a chiral. So any line of symmetry under fish projection will make it a chiral. You have, to make, you have to be careful that they're the same. Because what if this top group was, hey, what if that was a CH3? That's not symmetrical. Because if you look on both sides of that line of symmetry, COOH and CH3, they're different compounds. They're not the same. So it's not achiral. But the way I wrote it, they are achiral. Now let's take a crack at these. <laughs> um, is this achiral? Or chiral. Okay. You're looking at chirality of Fisher projections. You're not looking at RS. You're not looking at Nancy or diaspora. You're just looking at straight up chirality. That's it. Okay. Two different things. So let's draw a line down the middle. All right. If we took a vertical line, is there a line of symmetry? No. This H does not match up with that H and vice versa. Or that OH. This OH does not line up with this H. Yeah, and COOH, that's on the line of symmetry, so we don't really have to look at that. But regardless, we, already, we can already see that it's chiral on that plane. Well, let's take a look at another plane right here. Is there a line of symmetry? No. If you look at it, OH does not match with that H. H does not match with that OH. Though the COOH does match with that COOH oh, across that line of symmetry, but the others don't match up. So it's chiral. Let's take a look at this one. Let's draw a vertical line. Does that have an internal line of symmetry? No. Those H's do not, these H's right here are not symmetrical to those halogens. What if you draw an internal line of symmetry right here? Ooh. Well, let's take a look. Let me erase some of these two. Yeah. Nope. So an internal line of symmetry. Well, CL and CL, they match. COOH, COOH, they match. H and H, they match. Now the H and the BR, they lie on that plane of symmetry. That's for your game. If we're taking that hypothetical slice through the atom, hypothetically, it would be pretty symmetrical because it's on that plane of symmetry. It's kind of like if my head for example, was bromine, right? And I, there's just like an imaginary line of symmetry sliced through it. It would be symmetrical for the most part. <laughs> It'd be symmetrical though. So you can hopefully you get what I'm trying to say. All right. Now for here, let's start taking a look at some relationships. Now this should be the last part of your um, problem set. <laughs> and this is going to be a little tough. Um, now, the easiest thing to do is not quite intuitive. I'll tell you a little later. But 
The surefire way to do this is assigning every single stereo center as R or S. Okay. So we know that, okay, horizontal lines are dashed or not dashed, wedged. Okay. And let's just say for the first one, let's just assign all of those stereo centers with red or stereo center branches with red. Out of the four, which one has the highest priority? Which sigma bond has the highest priority? Well, chlorine is the biggest one out of its, what it's connected to. Hydrogen, is the lowest one, it's four. Now you're looking at a CH3 and a CHBR CH3. This carbon, this is a valid carbon and it's directly coordinated, coordinated, connected to a bromine. So it would be a CHBR CH3 group. Which one would we take priority? It would be this one because that carbon is connected to a bromine, a carbon, and a hydrogen. This carbon is only connected to hydrogen, hydrogen, and hydrogen. So that's our third priority. So let's look at the uh, clockwise, counterclockwise. One, whoops, one, two, three. That is pretty clockwise. That's R. Okay. However, look at that. Your four, your four group, your least subject, not least substitute, your least priority group, hydrogen, is in the front. Switch method. Switch method, it becomes S. Because if you were to grasp that hydrogen and look at, at it down that the barrel of that sigma bond, it would be S. So let me repeat myself. This is what we talked about before. This is weird to wrap your head around. But if your fourth priority group is in the front, if it's wedged, okay, switch the entire thing, okay? All right, now let's look at this stereo center. Let's pretend that it's blue, all right? All the connections are blue. Bromine, we're obviously get one. Hydrogen, we get four, okay? Now let's take a look at between this carbon and this carbon. Which one would get priority? Well, this carbon is connected to a chlorine directly, so it'd be uh, chlorine. CH3 and then an H, while this carbon is only connected to an H and an H and an H. This one also takes priority because it has chlorine. So it'd be two, three. Now, only looking at the blue numbers, so don't get, don't confuse yourself. One, two, three. One, two, and three. And that's pretty clockwise. So that's R. But remember, your hydrogen is in the fourth, or your hydrogen is the fourth, uh, sub, the fourth priority, the last priority, and it's facing out of the page. In, I'm losing my mind. And the hydrogen is just facing out of the page. It's wedged. It's wedged. You switch it. So what though it was R, switch method. It's S. So for you to um, assign everything, let's erase these. My actual thing is S and S, right? S and S. Ta-da! There you go. Now let's uh, move on and start looking at these. Now, what is its relationship with these? And you might be thinking, well, shit, do I have to do R and S for all of these? In a nutshell, it's a very foolproof way. Okay. But what I like to do is look at the entire compound Holistically, look at the whole thing. And this is what I'm talking about that. So Fisher structures, the way they're um, situated, there are, they're, the ones horizontal are facing towards you and the ones that are vertical are facing away from you, right? Um, so the rule is for Fisher projections, you cannot pancake flip it. So a cyclohexane, right? You can pancake flip that into a cyclohexane that looks like this. You can you can pancake flip, pancake flip it, and make it look like that. Fisher projections, you cannot do that. Do not, please, do not do that. What you can do, keep it in that plane of the paper and rotate it. You can rotate but not pancake flip. Okay. Now, a little bit of a detour before I move on to that. I wanted, I forgot um, this one example. So right here, you notice that the hydrogens are 
and on the wedge lines. So does that mean that whenever you do RNS stereochemistry for fish regressions, you should always switch it? No, do not. Only when your four priorities on one of those wedges. Because what if you had something like this? CL, let's do BR, OH, then H. Ooh, what about that? What if your H was, um, that's not chiral. What if your H was in one of the dotted formations? What if it was on the vertical line? Well, if your fourth priority group is facing away from you in a um, dotted line, you don't switch. So if we were to assign priority four, obviously, and bromine chlorine, bromine takes priority, then chlorine, and then this carbon. Let's look at the let's look at the number scheme. One to two to three. That is clockwise. That's R. All right, that's R. Do we have to flip it? No. H is in the back. H is dashed. Do not flip it. So this is an example of when not to switch. I cannot emphasize that enough. If you don't get it, rewatch the video. Okay. So going back to this, we can rotate Fisher projections. Okay. You can rotate them, but not pancake flip them. So if we were to rotate this structure, all right, let, let me erase some of this loudness. If we were to rotate this, all right, something and I can't express um, enough is rotating everything 180 degrees, okay? So if I were to rotate it, this would rotate down here. This would rotate up here. This chlorine would rotate down here. Bromine rotate down here or up there, and hydrogen down here. That looks like a lot. I know. It's you just have to visualize that you're rotating this entire thing around. And in all honesty, if you're not good at spatial arrangement, this is one of the things, things you might be um might have a lot of trouble with. And you just I don't know. I don't know, dude. But you rotate it, and if you rotate it, all right. Well, let's let's color code them. Let's see if this, this will help. CH3, CH3, or that's CH3, all right? If you were to rotate it, that CH3 would not be down here, okay? This CH3, if you were to rotate up here, it would be up there. Chlorine, right here. Chlorine would be down here. Bromine would be up here. Bromine and chlorine. Now let's take a look at these hydrogens. This hydrogen that was right here is now down here. This hydrogen down there is now up here. So you see how I physically just rotated it around. There we go. Now I just rotated it around and just kept things same connectivity, same spatial arrangement. I just rotate it. That's completely acceptable. Now, the same compound, I didn't break any bonds, I didn't switch anything around. If I rotate it, that's fair game, it's still the same compound. Now, notice, look, A, B, C, D. This, it's the same thing as B. What? What the shit? It's the same thing. They're identical. A and B are the same. It's almost like that's one of the concepts we're learning. What? what is that like? It's like one, it's one of the options for your problem set. I know. I know. Um, now let's take a look at C and D. Okay. So if C and D are kind of the same thing, you know, you have those methyl groups, top and bottom. The only thing that's different are the arrangements of those CLs and BRs and the H's. So let's take a step back. Let's Assign R and S, okay? So for this one, priority number one, two, three, four. Okay, if you're having trouble on why I did that, uh, rewind the video to the beginning of this section because it is the same compound. All right, for this one, one, two, and three, that is R, that's clockwise. That, that, that would be R, but note, 
ages in the front, so that's actually S. And then for this bottom one, one, two, three, four. That's one, two, three. That is counterclockwise, that's S. But that fourth group is in the front, so it's now R because the switch method. And this is the cool thing I wanted to show you guys, especially because this is like a nice, neat trick for your problems and for your test. Look at this. This entire section stayed the same. It didn't change anything between A and C. And look at the serochemistry. They're both S. All right. So if in this one, you flipped CL and H, well, let's take a look at the serochemistry. All right. We have one, two, three, four. That is, that's counterclockwise, that's S, but H is in the front, so we have to change it to R, switch method. So there you go. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> You take one branch, you flip it around, you flip that stereochemistry. Isn't that cool? Cool little trick. Now, let's take a look at this one. BR. Well, it's in the same spot. Same exact thing. We already did the same spiel. So this is still R. And just to double check, let's double check. Uh, one, two, three, four. Okay. So we... S, it would be counterclockwise, but remember this fourth group being in, in the wedge changes it to R. So it was S, but we changed it to R. And look at that. I'm right. It's still R. Now, what are the relationships? Well, let me go ahead and just write this out real quick. This is S and that's S. You're all in the practice. You do that on your own. See why. But if it S, S, stays S, S, there's a chance it's identical. Take a look at the connectivity and rotate your Fisher projection just to double check, but there's a chance that it's identical. If it's R, R, it's an enantiomer. It's a complete reversal of every single stereocenter. All right, that's an enantiomer is a mirror image, meaning every single stereocenter is switched. If you have R, S, R, it's an enantiomer would be S, R, S, okay? So thankfully for this case, SS and RR, they're an enantiomer. Complete, complete reversal. If there's reversal in only one chiral center, like SR or RS, it's a diastereomer. That's it. Diastereomer is only one change. And to give you an example. Um, Carbohydrates. This are these are Fisher projections on some carbohydrates. O H H O H O H. Just yeah. Just for an example. All right. An example of diastereomer would be if you switched this carbon. That's a stereo center change. That's a diastereomer because you're only changing one of those um, chiral centers. So looking at this, okay. Well, if A and B are the same, let's just treat B as if it was A. SS changes to SR. So B and C must be diastereomers. And if B and A are the same, A and C must be diastereomers. And B and D... SS turns into RR. They must be enantiomers. And another quick trick they can do for enantiomers, you know what, how I said you can't pancake flip it? That's still true. Don't do that. But if you notice, um, if you pancake flip this on that vertical plane, it gives you the structure of D. And that's kind of the reason why you don't want to pancake flip it, because if you pancake flip it and you're trying to see, are these chiral, is it the same? Don't pancake flip it. But 
Nancy Mirrors, Pancake Flipping It is like kind of looking at that mirror because Pancake Flip is that mirrored image. So it's just a cool little trick, but don't don't pan, don't get in the habit of pancake flipping. Just like it's a cool thing. Like, all right, I look at the R, the SS, and it becomes an RR. That's enough reason to be to look at it and like, oh, that's a diastereomer. mirror. Uh, as just like another way to check if I were to pancake flip, oh, it still matches if I pancake flip it, which I know I can't do, but because I pancake flip it, I'm mirroring that image. Not superimposable because they're an mirrors, but they still reflect that same connectivity. They still have the opposite handedness. So what I just spewed out, it's a little bit of a big concept. So I'm going to let you guys think about that. And I think that'll be the end of the video. All right. So I'm sorry this took a little while, but this is a pretty big topic. And I really want you guys to grasp a hold of this. So, yeah.